then click the to keep. Thank you for turning. Nah, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay. What is that? Don't even matter. Cut, cut. All I think about is you. Even when I'm with my boo, you know I'm crazy over you. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are new here, my name is Dose of Tempest. If you are returning, hey boo, hey. So, as you guys know, we've been talking about Fireboy's health, and today is going to be part three of basically our series. As you guys know, part one, we talked about endocrine disruptors and what we put on our body. Then we talked about food, the best and worst foods for Fireboy health. So now we're going to talk about what we surround ourselves with. So that's the environment. So we're going to dive into a critical topic today, which is environmental triggers to avoid. Um, these things can negatively impact our hormone balance and or increase fibroid health. So as we discussed before, fibroids and hormone imbalances are closely linked to what we expose ourselves to daily. Hmm. And before we get into all of that, when we talk about food, y'all, this is nothing but water, no alcohol. This is Okay, so we're going to talk about three different things uh, in our environment that you can uh, easily overlook, but have a serious effect on your health. So, so the first thing in our environment that we can control and we want to avoid is plastic products or BPA. So if you aren't aware, BPA is a chemical found in many plastic products like water bottles, food containers, and even receipts. Crazy, right? Right? So BPA is a synthetic estrogen that can disrupt our hormone balance, potentially leading to fibroid growth and other reproductive issues. If you guys remember in part one, when we're talking about endocrine disruptors, we talked about synthetic estrogen. When we're exposed to it, it can mimic estrogen in the body. And it meaning the synthetic estrogen. So it can mimic estrogen in the body, which is not what we want if we're trying to keep hormones balanced. Remember part one, got to keep a balance here. So then you're like, okay, well, tip is how do I avoid BPA in plastic? Well, here we go. Now you don't have to be fancy like me and hold, uh, you know, like a champagne glass, but you want to opt in for a glass as much as possible and or uh, metal water bottles. That could be an alternative too. But when you're eating, drinking, try to opt in for glass which I hate a little knocking thing, but try to opt in for glass rather than plastic. If you're going to the store as well, I know this is sound crazy and it's like tip is you're being extra, but we don't know exactly what causes fibroids to grow. These are just things in research. Many people have already found that these uh, have an impact on fibroid growth. With that being said, if you can opt in for reusable bags or paper bags, try to do that and avoid plastic bags. If you have to get a plastic bag, okay, cool, but try to limit the number of plastic bags that you have, especially my people who have a drawer full of plastic bags. Sis, limit that, okay? I know it can be hard in the beginning, but remember, try to do this step by step. The first thing that you can do when it comes to changing out plastic from glass is try to start with your cutlery first. So. Um, any, any silverware plates and all of that stuff, try to get with glass, try to go with real plates. Okay. Um, so let's get into number two. Okay. Now I know this next one is going to be a little bit tough for some of y'all, but just, just hang tight. Let me get through it. Okay. So the next topic that I want to talk to talk about is fragrances that are in beauty and household products okay so 
everything that smell good isn't good for you. All right. So this can be our lotions, perfumes, and even cleaning products. Um, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail of some of those other products as well. So that is synthetic fragrances. Um, these are found in beauty products, perfumes, and even household cleaners. These fragrances often contain chemicals that, these are chemicals that can disrupt your hormones. So, um, so plyphates, I'll make sure I get the word right because I'm not pronouncing it. They have been linked to reproductive health issues and can act as a synthetic estrogen that mimics in your body. So those are things that you want to, to avoid. Um, and when we talk about the fragrances that's in beauty products or whatnot, not only is in lotion, um, your bath stuff that we talked about in, uh, in part one of this, this is also like your Bath and Body Works candles. Oh, I know y'all. I love, 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 love Bath and Body Works candles. But after understanding what's in it and what it gives off in the environment, have to let it go. And that includes plugins too. And it doesn't matter what brand. So kind of look into it and make sure that, um, you know, the, the, the plugins and the, the air spray, the cleaning products, all of that, make sure that it is clean. Look into the ingredients and this will include detergents. This will include dry sheets. This will include, um, bleach and all that stuff. Like if you see something that is a, uh, synthetic, um, estrogen or can just serve as a synthetic estrogen, leave it alone. So, um, that plethites is one of the things that you want to avoid. Switching to fragrance free or natural products can really help reduce your, um, your exposure. Um, also looking for brands that list all the ingredients transparently. If it just says perfume or fragrance, it contains a hidden chemical. Okay. Number three, non-stick cookware. I kind of touched on this early a little bit on doing part one, but this one may surprise you. So like your non-stick cookware, especially, especially Teflon. Sorry guys. It contains chemicals like PFAS. And these are sometimes called forever chemicals. If you guys don't believe me, go ahead and download any type of app that give you a list of ingredients, or you can Google use an AI that will break down um, the ingredients in a product and tell you which ones are harmful, have chemicals and or that are toxic. Okay. So, yeah. so these substances don't break down easily and they can accumulate in our bodies, potentially disrupting hormones and increasing our risk for fibroids. Once again, like I kind of mentioned earlier, switch to stainless steel or cast iron. Now, if you cook, if you cook, you should at least have a cast iron skillet. Keep it, that's what you want. So as you switch over from plastic to glass, for your pots and pans or oh, stay away from Teflon and move over to stainless steel or cast iron. And there's some cooking, um, there's some pots and pans that you can go to that are glass. So those are going to be your three choices that I recommend that you use so that you are not, you're not exposing yourself as much to these synthetic chemicals. So I know that this can be a lot for some. So I would just stop there. I told y'all I had three and I gave it to y'all. Okay. So those are the three environmental factors to watch out for when trying to support hormone health and minimize fibroid growth. Small changes can lead to big improvements over time. Remember knowledge is power. And the more we know, the better choices that we can make for our health. So, so if you got to this part, 
I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in to part three of our fibroid health series. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And drop a comment below. What changes are you making? You. Let's keep the conversation going, y'all. Until next time, bye.